So tonight I'm going to show you how to do a bit of weaving. Um, weaving is great when you are a knitter because it's a great way to use up all of your scraps of yarn. So as you can see, kind of round about me here, I have got lots of um, yarn that I'm going to use. It's a bit scrappy that I'm probably going to, not going to use for anything else. I've got scratchy mole here, um, which nobody's going to wear. And I've kept it. I've chosen some different fibres which are going to work well together, different textures. So I've got some sort of chunky yarn, which is nice. The mole here is finer. It's a different texture, but it's much finer. I've got this variegated yarn and I've also got some uh, wool roving here which is great because it, it provides a really thick textured um, weave um, fibre to use. I've also got this yarn which is bookly if you like. It's got lots of little nodules and nobbles on it which makes it good for texture as well. Okay so um, yeah it's a way to use up all your scrap. In terms of colour palette I've kept mine very contemporary. So it's basically black, white and grey and I'm just going to try and introduce lots of elements of texture in there. So this is one that I did. I did a wee weaving course um, maybe last year sometime. It's just to show you the different elements that you can introduce. So you've got the kind of basic weave element which we'll, we'll learn how to do. That's in this kind of thinner yarn here. And then by using some different textures you can create sort of more standout effects. This stitch here, this is actually called the sumac stitch in weaving and it just looks like a line of knitting so I'm definitely going to show you how to do that. Um, you can see how prominent the, the roving is when it's used in weaving, it sort of makes it really stand out and even creating these wee fake pom-poms is, is very easy. So there's a couple of wee weaving techniques that I'm going to show you how to do. Now I have started my weave already because believe it or not I Try, I got the video going and then it crashed on me and corrupted all my files. So I'm not going to take it out and start again. I'm just going to sort of like show you how to set up your loom um, using a, an extra loom that I have here. Um, okay, so basically I, in order to create my loom, I'll bring it back for a second again, I want uh, to make a wall hanging because they're all very cool and trendy right now. Um, I have collected a piece of wood. I've actually got driftwood. Um, I got it from the beach and I want to make a wall hanging that is slightly narrower than my driftwood um, so that's why I've, I've kind of used a loom that is approximately sort of A4 size but I've not used the whole width of it, I'm making it slightly narrower um, and I've got some tails and things on it but I'm going to show you all of that. So in order to do some weaving. You do not need to buy an expensive loom at the beginning. You can do it just from cardboard. Now, what I what I would suggest you do is get a piece of cardboard and cut it down to the size of the wall hanging that you want to make. Now, this size here, I'm just going to use to demonstrate the um how to sort of like um get your your warp threads all set up on the um on your cardboard loom. So all I've done is um, cut out my piece of cardboard. This size is actually like a bookmark size. This is perfect size for making a woven bookmark. And I've done this um, as a project as well, something you could try at home. But what I've done is I have measured in from the top and I've drawn a line right across approximately one centimeter in. So one centimeter in from the top edge and one centimeter in from the bottom edge. And then for the big one that I've done, I have measured across the way and I've put a mark one centimetre along. Now in this bookmark it's actually half a centimetre, I made this one very narrow. But if you're doing a sort of big wall hanging then one centimetre would be enough. So make little marks and then cut down to the one centimetre line. So you've got these little tabs at the top. And then what you're doing is, you're going to use some yarn, some wool, to um, set up your loom. So you take your yarn, your chosen yarn. Now, for making a, a big wall hanging, I like to use the chunky yarn rather than the thin yarn. So I would suggest using some of your chunkier yarn because it makes um, for a more, um, I don't know, just a more textured, um, funky wall hanging. 
but because this bookmark is very small, I'm going to use my thin yarn. So basically, your your yarn sort of like goes on on the back. It's just your tail is hidden at the back, and then you push your yarn through that first tab there, if you can see that. Then you take your thread, your yarn, all the way down to the corresponding bottom tab. All of these tabs should line up exactly below each other. So when you measure, you always have to have a straight edge on the left hand side and you measure on one centimeter. One centimeter from the top should be the same as one centimeter from the bottom and just make sure that's on a straight line. Otherwise your weaving is gonna be all squinty. Okay, so what's happened there is I've taken my my working yarn is coming out the back now, um, if you can see. So what I then want to do is loop it around that tab at the bottom and bring it back up the front. So loop it back and up the front again. You can see it's popping back through. And then take it up to the top, push it back through the second tab, pull the yarn round the back and so that it grips around, it cuddles behind that tab and then bring it through again and push it through at the bottom, around the back of the tab, bring it back up the front and you're basically doing that all the way along. So that's what you do um, to, to actually set up your loom. So this, these lengths here, of yarn, I wouldn't suggest you use mohair to set up your loom either. I'm just using that because it's handy, uh, but it's too hairy, really. I think to use it as a loom, it'd just be a bit confusing. Um, but you get the general idea. We've got one, two, three, four weft strings on here, and you would just carry right along to the end. So yes, weft. This is what we call the weft and weaving. You've got warp and you've got weft, and the warp is basically where we go. Hor you know, horizontally, backwards and forwards to actually create the fabric, but the weft is when we actually start um, almost like preparing the framework, if you like, for the weaving to take place. Okay, so that is um, that. I'm going to bring over the original weave that I started doing, and this is what I'm going to be carrying on working with as we go through the video. So, um, what I'm going to show you how to do first, the way that I started it off, I started to do some basic weaving, and I'll recap that in a second. I then did the sumac stitch, so you can see it creates these nice Vs like it, it's been knitted. And I also put on these little tassels at the end, um, or at the bottom, and these are called raya, um, like raya knots. And you can see it knots over here and then the tail flows down. So I'm going to show you how to do these raya knots. Now these raya knots are most commonly used at the bottom of your wool hanging. But you could put them in anywhere to create a nice little um, added textural feature into your wool hanging. It really is up to you. So what I did was... I decided that my ta I wanted my tails to be a combination of three different types of yarn. So one was a glitter mohair, the other one was a plain black mohair, and the other one it was a variegated chunky yarn that I've used for the weft. And I cut it in 30 centimeter um, lengths because I wanted some quite long tassels to come out the bottom. So to attach them in the raya knot, basically you take your length and you fold it in half like this. Now the raya knot actually is going to grip round two of these weft strands. So it's actually going to grip round two of them. So the way that you do it is the leave a little space at the bottom of your weaving. Don't put too much weaving on top at the beginning. And you are putting your raya knot over the top of those two weft strands. Okay, so I'm actually going to show you further up in the weave because it will make it easier for you to see. So if I pull that up, the, the tail goes right on the top of the two strands of yarn and then the tail goes behind and through 
and then on the other side it does the same so it goes behind and through like that okay so what you end up with is when you sort of pull it up is you end up with a knot effect it's not secured but you've got a knot effect and then you've got your long tails coming down underneath okay so i'm going to pull that out because i actually want that to be um down on the bottom corner so i'm going to put that in again now if you are tight for space then the way to do it would be to thread your strands through your needle to make it that bit easier so again if i half it right then i am going to push that needle down a wee bit so half of my strand goes on top of the two weft lengths okay and then one side goes in the back of the first weft and i'm going to pull that through okay and then the other side is going to go through the other weft strand okay so if you can see that i'm going to pop it through here push it through that way okay, okay so that's it and then i'm going to pull that out and i can just adjust the knot i want to keep it a little bit full so that i can see um, that knot at the top okay and i've got another one to put in i'll just show you how to do that as well recap one more time so again we'll half the length i've got these two weft strands here in the black if you can see so i place the half over the top of that and then I'm just gonna it's a bit hard to get my fingers in there so I'm going to just thread up the needle oops that doesn't want to go in so let me do that again Get the three strands through at the one time there we go and don't worry if it becomes off center so it's twisting into the center pull that down and then get my other one my other side of the strand and again it's going to go into that side of the weft and we'll just pull that through like that okay so that is how you do the wee raya knot then and that can look quite effective at the bottom of your weaving okay so i'm going to do i think some basic weaving and um, since you haven't really seen that yet now, because I've used this loom quite a lot, it's kind of curving now on the cardboard. Um, obviously, if you had a wooden one, it wouldn't do that. And if you've got brand new cardboard, it's not likely to do that. But sometimes it can be easier to work with your loom if the strands are raised slightly from the back of the cardboard. So if you are doing it <coughs> and yours is flat on the cardboard, you can actually raise up your strands by popping like a knitting needle underneath it and that will use your raise your strands up so that it's easier for you to work okay so i think what i'm going to do now then is i'm going to do some basic weaving and i'm going to do it in the um some of this bookly yarn this bookly gray so you know you can pull some out rather than having it attached to the ball and get that all um, threaded up and we'll just do some basic weaving to start off with okay so basic weaving is over and under basically over and under so 
we're going to, to bring the yarn in to the weave where we go under the first strand. Now you can work from either side, it doesn't really matter, it's just because I'm right handed then I'll generally start from the right side. Although when we're doing this stitch I generally start from the left side. Um, but if we go under the first weft we go over the second weft and then under the third weft and over the fourth wa weft if you can see how you know that works. So if I raise it up a wee bit and start that again what you're doing is going under and over and under and over and under and over and under and over okay under and then pull that through pull that through and leave a tail because we have to weave in all those tails at the end so what we've got is under and overs all the way into the middle and it, when you stop you just look at where you put the last one and this last thread went under okay so I know the next one is an over and then under and over and under and over and under and over if you see what I'm doing there and then I'm going to pull that through okay don't worry too much if it pulls up so that's you over to the left hand side now so what you then do is you go under left hand side over so you're doing the opposite now so we finished off with an over on this left hand side weft then we're going to go under then because we're going to do the opposite and then we go back in exactly the same way but where we've done a an over on the previous row we're doing an under so it's opposite so exactly the same pull it through now it's important to note on these edges that you need to leave a little wiggle room like there okay so a couple of millimeters extra right because if you pull it in too too tight then you're going to draw your weave in and it's going to end up a funny shape it's going to be all squiffy so that is still too tight where it's gripping it shouldn't be gripping at all it should be quite loose around um, that side weft so I'm going to pull that out a wee bit right and just leave a couple of millimeters slack right and that your your wool will just take up that slack okay so where did I leave so I've left with an under so now I'm on an over under over under right all the way along and then I'm going to pull all that all the way through okay and then you can just push it down with your fingers like that okay so I'm just going to do a couple more rows of this grey and then I'm going to change it again so again I'm doing the, the opposite from what I did previously So I'm going to leave that like that for now. I'm going to cut that off. Okay. So I'm going to show you what difference it makes to use the roving. So I think we need, um, I think we're going to go with some cream now. So I've got some nice roving. I'm not going to use it as thick as it's, as it's um, like there. I'm going to probably half it. So I've got a nice length of roving that is, I don't know, maybe about a centimetre thick. Okay. And I think that's going to do me a sort of double layer all the way along. Okay. So I'm just going to do my basic weave. And again, I'm going to do it opposite from before. So under, over. I don't need a... I don't need the needle for this because I can just use my fingers and it's easier really just to pick up every alternate strand and push your roving underneath um, yeah 
push it up, pull it under, push it up, pull it under. Okay, so then I'm going to pull that through. And push it down like that. Okay, and what you can actually do with this as well is like pucker it up slightly because you kind of want to have a wee bit more of a puckered effect, you know, so that the nice thick yarn is more prominently pushing through like that. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm going to get along there. I think I'm going to pull it through a tiny wee bit more because there's no point in having a big huge tail like that side okay I'm going to take it back so under the opposite way being really careful at this edge now because it's quite thick then it would be really noticeable if I made it really tight or too loose actually so it's a bit of a, a balancing act Okay, so then we go over and under and under. Pull up the second one and make it under and under and under and under and under. Okay. So I'm going to push that down. Now, this is where um, you can see why having an interesting um, weft yarn makes sense. Because if you're push putting through, you know, these um, thick bits and you can see the weft, it makes it much more interesting. So before I um, finish up here, I'm just going to gently pucker these up just to make them a bit more prominent. I'm just going to pull them all out a little bit to make them stand out. Push it down and do the same on the lower one. Okay. You can play about with it until you get it right. And then to secure that in now, what I want to do is um, put maybe some basic weaving on top of that now, um, just to sort of gel that in. So I think I am going to use um, Decisions, Decisions. I think I'm going to use some of the black, the black mohair. Um, and I'm going to use some of this sort of sparkly stuff because I didn't use that. I haven't used that again since the wee tails at the bottom. The great thing about weaving is it's just so experimental. Um, and it's great for using up all your spare yarn. Okay, so I'm going to do the basic weave again and then I'm going to show you how to do this sumac stitch. Okay, so it's going to go under and over, opposite again, under, over, under, over, under, over. Right, okay, so um, now I'll show you how to do the sumac stitch, similar to what was done down further down in the work. I'm going to use grey, and I think it looks quite nice if it's done in a, a kind of chunkier colour, so that it stands out. So basically, what you're doing is, this time, you are going in, you're going to start on the left hand side okay you're going to start on the left hand side of your work and you're going to go in under 
the, the most left weft cord and pull it right through leaving it a tail okay so you've got your yarn here and what you're going to do is you're working you're kind of like making loops round um, the weft cords Um, in the opposite direction to your weaving work. So we're going to be weaving along that way, but we're going to be pointing our needle to make the loops that way. Okay, so we're working towards the right, but we're going to be pointing our needle towards the left. And what I mean by that is we've put our yarn underneath the first one and the second wave, what we're going to do is we're going to go round the back of it with our needle pointing to the left and we're going to pull that through all the way through so that you've got this um, sort of little curl happening right around that weft cord then we're going to move to the next one and do the same again okay so we're going to go underneath it with our needle pointing backwards to the left and we're going to pull all the yarn through like that and then we're going to do that again and pull it all the way through. We're going to do that all the way along. Now, tension is quite important here. So you want to try and keep the length of these little loops the same. Yeah, so that you get a nice neat finish. So, and I often find that when I put my yarn round like this, it kind of springs up again. So I use my finger to press it down. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I've pulled my loop, my loop through, I've checked my tension so they all look relatively even and then I'm going to put my finger on that just so that it doesn't move and then I'm going to do the same in the next one, yep, um, the same length, put my finger on it, pull it right through again. I may have too much yarn here actually. Pull it through, finger on it, behind and pull through. Okay, finger on it. So the yarn, the needle is going forward to the next weft but looping back round to the left. up move to the next one and to the next one So when you get to the end and you do your loop round, I want you to do another one, exactly the same. So another loop around. Okay, now this time we're going to change direction. So we are going to be working towards the left. So we're going to be looping our needle um, towards the right this time. So we've gone round that first one so then we move to the second one so the same thing again is you loop your yarn all the way around the back of the next weft um, so it goes pointing to the right this time so loop it all the way around and then to the next one loop it all the way around And again, you can use your, your finger 
to pull it down. Stop a wee minute and just check that your um, loops are the right tension. They're not too loose and they're not too tight. Okay, so pull that through. Finger on into the next one. Pull that up and then you, you're going to start to see that effect starting to create these V's starting to appear as you go along. So just carry on doing that until you get to the end. Okay, so that's me at the end and I have got a, a nice wee line of V's there, if you can see that. Okay, so to secure it you can do another wee loop round on that left side and I'm going to take my needle out of this if I've got far too much yarn here. So. Let me just cut it a wee bit. Um, can I use that later? Okay. So that's. Um, I'm going to loop it round again, and I'm just going to go um, sort of into the back of that, just to sort of tie it off a little bit. So two loops, and then going into the back. That just is going to secure it a wee bit better for me. Okay. I'm going to push everything down. You just keep doing that with your weaving. Okay, so one other thing that you could try is you could do like a little pom-pom explosion into your work um, if you want to. And then you can weave around the back of it. So to do a wee pom-pom explosion, what you want to do is, you know, get your chosen yarn that you want to do you want to use and can remember we just try winding it around your hand until you get a kind of reasonable clump of it you know maybe about 10 times you don't want to make it so big that it's going to be uh, hard to work with and then just cut it and take it off your hand so it's in a, a kind of um, semicircle well, it's in a circle, it's not a semicircle. We're actually going to cut it into a semicircle. So anywhere around the circle, we just cut right through it. Okay, so we're just left with uh, strands. Okay, so what you're then doing is choose any weft that you want. I might just put some pom-poms in at the end here. Don't put them right at the end, because if you put them right at the end, they're just going to fall out. And then just, you know, so I'm putting that behind and then I'm going to push that down like that. You can do this once you've got a bit more weaving in or you can do it at this point in time. So I'm going to put a few pom-pom explosions on there. So say three. And then you're going to weave straight on top of it again just to secure it in. Okay. So we'll do the same again. So I've got my circle it's wound around my hand. I'm just going to cut anywhere in here to make it into a few strands of, of yarn. And then I'm going to place it directly next door to the previous one. So put that half. So it's not secure at this point in time. So you kind of need to be careful, the whole thing doesn't fall to bits. But you can see that's just gripped, gripping round there. So I'm going to do one more, because I'm going to trim them, but I'm not going to trim them until I have, like, jammed them in with my next few lines of, of weaving. So, again, the same cut in half. 
and take any strays away and then I'm going to put that right next door in the next available weft. So they're all close together and they're going to bump up nice together. Okay, so in order for me to secure all those pom-poms, they're going to get squashed right down like that um, with my next roll of, of weaving. So they're going to get squashed right down. So I am going to use this leftover... Um, no, that's not going to stand out that well. So I'm going to use some of this nice pink. It's pinky blush cream colour. So this is going to be quite nice and strong for holding my pom-poms in. And I'm just going to do some basic weaving just to ensure the whole thing is going to stay put all of these pom-poms. So basic weaving. Weaving tails. So you'll notice that I'm coming right behind all these pom-poms right and you can't push them down right away because you need to you know do a bit more first so come along do another row above again leaving a bit of leeway at the side there Finishing that off. Okay. So that's it. Okay, so push it all down. So push all this down. And then what you're going to find then is that your kind of wee pom pom explosion is going to be fairly secure in there. And I'm just going to do a few more lines of this. So one thing you need to be mindful of is in terms of the size of your wall hanging. So push it all down like that. Okay, so it's straightening up. It's straightening up again, although it's pushing up slightly. So what I'm going to do with this is I am now going to give this a big haircut. I can't really get my bigger scissors so I can do it in one go. I'm going to give it a big haircut. I really just want it to be kind of puffed, not too long. I'm cutting quite a bit away here. Shake it out. Okay, so there we go. And there we have, you know, I kind of just like a, a bit of texture. A bit of added texture onto the weave. So one thing you need to watch is these loops are going to come off at the end and these loops are going to get tied off and then they're going to go around your wood. So you don't want to go weaving right up to the top because then you're not going to be able to get your wood through the loops. Okay so you have to stop at a good point. So I'm kind of aware that I'm getting close to that point but I'm probably not there yet so what i'm going to do now then is i've taught you how to do three different things so how to add a pom-pom explosion into your weaving the basic weave stitch the sumac stitch and the um rye what are they called again raya knots okay 
So I just want you to use all these different techniques and create yourself a, a nice wall hanging. I'm going to carry on until mine is finished and then I'm going to show you how to tie it off and then weave in all your ends at the end. Happy weaving! Okay, so I am going to stop here. Um, what I did to finish mine off was I put my basic weaving um, and the blush behind here to secure the pom-pom explosion. And then what I also did was I did another sumac line in the thick roving. So I, I think that looks quite effective. Um, so I'm not going to do any more than that. I'm going to teach you how to take it all off now. So first thing is we'll do the bottom part first. And we're just basically tying it off. So what I want you to do is flip your um, raya knots back the way like that. So what you're left with is all these little uh, loops. Now, we need to sort of push them up a little bit just to create some length because we're just going to tie them off, basically. Um, so if we push them up, that just gives us a bit of, a bit of space to work. So start with um, the first two. Take these two loops off your wee tabs, okay? So just do two at a time, otherwise it can get too uh, messy, right? So push up, you can push up to give you yourself a little bit of room. There's not an awful lot of tying room here, so you kind of have to just take your time and hopefully you've got just enough to get it through. I think my yarn is not the best because it's so fluffy. It's very slippy. Um, okay, but that's that first one done. Okay, so moving along. So just give them a wee push up. Just to give yourself more room on these legs at the bottom. So you're just tying Taking off the next two loops, push it up a wee bit just to give you more room. Okay, and take that one loop and take the next loop off and tie these two together in a double knot. Take your time. Okay, so do you carry along till you've done them all. So that's you tied off your um, bottom ends. Okay, and you can always just readjust your wee raya knots at the ends as well. Okay, so the top part, you've because you've left more space, or I've left quite a lot of space because I've got a thick bit of driftwood. So I'm going to just pop them all off actually. Um, I'm also going to take these, that knot that I did at the back out. I'm just going to pop them all off the loom. So they should pop off quite easily. There we go. Okay, so, and then if we place all the um, loops out in front of you, we, we're going to tie them. Again, um, just like we did before. Slightly different to the last time though. Um, you do want to put a little bit of pressure on um, the knot at the bottom. So I'm going to tie it once. I'm going to tie the first one to the second one. 
So the first one is just a single loop. So I'm going to tie that single knot. I'm going to pull it quite tightly, okay? And then I'm just going to do a single knot. Then I am going to tie the second loop to the third loop. Then the third loop to the fourth loop. fourth to the fifth the fifth to the sixth okay so pull all your loops out like that and for for quickness really I am not going to do really much at all um, to this. I don't even think I'm going to bother tying this one at all. Um, if they were quite close together and you were using the thread you can tie them so there's you tie the first strand to the second one, the second one to the third, the third to the fourth, the fourth to the fifth. But I don't think this is going to move much. So I'm not going to tie I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm going to flip it over though because now is the time to weave in all of these ends. So um, I'm going to keep all these loops, loops available. I am going to tie the, the side tail which is just one piece and I'm going to tie a double knot to the first loop so that that secures that element. So I'm going to tie that and I'm just going to cut that off. Just leave a wee tail that will sort of sit behind. And I'll do that the same with the other side. Okay. Then we have all of these ends to weave into the back of um, our work. And you don't really need to take huge amounts of time with this, to be honest, because uh, it's not like you're knitting. If it's a wall hanging and it's on your wall, nobody's going to see it. So literally just take the thread, take the end, pull it through some of the work that's behind here. And just pull it through, making sure it doesn't come out the other side. Pull it through a, th a few strands and then chop it off. That's quite okay. I'm actually going to weave in that wee bit because otherwise it's going to stick up. Okay. Right, okay. So obviously the wee thin bits are easy. The, the chunkier ones are more difficult to, to weave in. So basically what you can do with the, like this, the likes of this is this is thin enough that I can get my needle through it so I probably will just to make it a bit easier for me and, and then I'm going to take that and I'm just going to kind of go through um, one of these loops at the back. So one of these loops, pull it through, take your time because you can mess up your stitches on the other side. So pull it through, have a quick check, has it messed it up? No, that looks okay. Um, and actually that's fine, that's all you need to do and give it a wee, a wee chop. You don't need to go mad with this. Um, do the same on this side. Just um, going to take it through that loop behind here. Away. So we just carry on.
Okay, so all I did, um, after I finished weaving everything in, um, all I then did was um, just neaten off my edges. I, sometimes you, you can see them where they've been cut into V-shape, so cut up here, cut up here. Um, but I don't want mine to be like that, I want mine to be kind of straight along the bottom. So I've just trimmed them and made them a bit neater. Other than that, I haven't really done anything. And then all I did was I sort of pulled my work down so that I could quite easily get my piece of um, wood through. So this one's quite a chunky one. So we're pretty much done. All we really have to do now is add on a little bit of extra yarn around the top so that it can be hung up with. So I'm just going to use my black and white again. Um, and you know, it really simply is is just as simple as tying a bit of excess yarn on. Um, I guess you can have your knot at the back. To you know, when you tie it on, so that it's less visible. But it's just a case of knotting it and doing it the same at the other side. Having a wee think about how how long you want it to to be, you know what I mean? How how high you want it to hang from. So I don't want mine. I want mine quite short actually. So I'm just gonna tie it there. And that's you pretty much done. Cut it. And let's just see if we lay out the final weave. Uh, there we go. That's ready to hang up on your wall. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs>